So ever since I've been using Vim as my main code editor, I've been using a plugin called NerdTree for my file explorer. And it turns out you don't actually need NerdTree because there's a plugin for this actually built into Vim. So today we're going to take a look at NetTrue and see what I'm actually doing with it. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So pretty much every Vim user has probably come across Netro at some point, even if they didn't realize what it was. So let's just switch over to my main screen. I'll show you what I mean. So there's going to be times where you've accidentally opened up a folder within a Vim buffer. So let's just see what that actually looks like. Now it's going to look slightly different from what it would normally look like, just because when I open up a Vim buffer, I also have an extra Netro open. But you would have seen something like this. So come over here show you this again so you'd see this banner at the top and a list of all your folders so this is actually netro so what netro lets you do is actually open up a folder within a vim buffer then you can do various things like you can i don't know say cycle through these different view styles here you can do other things like i've got them listed up on a thing right here so <laughs> that's why i keep popping over that side i don't usually use most of the file manager -y things but you can also do things like you can delete a directory or delete a file. So if we try to delete something in here, like let's say just press delete on that, it will give me a prompt on that. So do I want to delete it? No, I don't. So you can do things like show and hide hidden files. This directory doesn't actually have any hidden files in it, so it's not going to really do much. But let's just quit out of this and bring up just my home directory. So bring up, is that going to work? Let's see if it, that worked. Yes, it did. Okay. So we go down to like my ZSH files and all that. ZSH, and we press GH, and then that will actually hide all of those hidden files, and we bring them back with GH again. You could also do things like changing the style of sort, so this is sorted by time, sorted by size, sorted by extension, and sorted by name, so that's done with the S key. You know, I'll just bring up screen key. You know, why didn't I think of doing that before? I'm not even really sure why I didn't do that. Anyway, so you press S, and you can actually change the sorting style. And if you press R, then you can do a reverse sort. So that works as you would expect for basically sorting. Nothing too special there, pretty much. And the one last thing I wanted to mention for this is you can do renames as well. So if you want to change this, it's going to use the move command. So rename and move are merged into one thing, like they are just on your regular Linux system. So if you want to do a rename and a move at the same time, then you can do that. Now, I, as I said, don't typically use the file manager -y things. And I'm not going to go into any more of them. I will leave a link to all of the key bindings down below. So if you want to check them out for yourself, go right ahead. I typically just use it as a way to explore my file tree. I will typically just use LF to modify my file system. That's just the workflow that I've got myself used to. So let's just have a look at my VimRC and basically have a look at what I'm doing. Because I'm not just running Netru with its default settings. I've made a couple of changes to it. So the first setting we have in here is netru underscore banner equals zero. So basically all that does is it just disables this banner over here. So I don't need it. So I just hide it. There's no point showing it. I'm just going to hide it anyway because it's just, it's a waste of space. I don't really see any point of showing it at all. Then the next one is the actual list style. So if we press I, I don't know if I showed this before. I might have, I just forgot about it. It was like 20 seconds ago. But you can actually change the style of this list. So I've just got it set to three, which is this sort of tree style. So if we press enter on one of these, that'll actually bring it up in here like this, rather than if you have it set to one of the other styles, then you'll actually be jumping directly into that directory. I'm not a big fan of that style. So yeah, you can get a rough idea of how that works like that. I prefer the tree style. It just makes it a bit easier to see everything that's going on at once. That's kind of just the way I like working with it though, because it's similar to the way that nerd tree works. So you'll see that a lot of the stuff that I do is to kind of make net true function like a nerd tree for the things that I care about. Now, as for this browse split, I can't remember exactly what this does, but this will give you an example of how you can use the Vim documentation to search for stuff for any of your plugins. So let's just try that. So help, or you could write out HE and then go netru underscore, not under, underscore, yes it is underscore. I can't read apparently, underscore split. Okay, so type that in and this will bring up the actual Vim documentation. So the other way to get to this is by pressing the F1 key that's bound within netru, but for any other plugins, you can just write in help and then whatever thing you wanna search for for that plugin or not even just plugins, also just for mainline Vim stuff. So it seems like this will make it so when I open up a new file within Netru, instead of opening up in a split, it's going to replace this previous window in here. 
So I'll just show you what that looks like in a separate Vim buffer. So open up that. And let's just go down to say my ZSHRC or anything in here really. So I press enter on this and you had a couple of options like opening up in splits, but I just like it to replace what's in here. If I want to do splits, I'm going to do splits in my own way. I don't really like the way that Netru handles them. And you'll see my absolute hack to get splits working nicely like they did in NerdTree. They don't work perfectly, but you'll see that when we get to it. So if I press enter on here, you'll see that for some reason it's not playing nicely with things like sim links. I'm not sure why sim links aren't playing nicely right now. It might be something I did. It it might be a net true thing. I can't remember. I'll try to work that out. But if we open up something that I know works, like this Angular config. Okay, is there even anything in that file? Bash history. Yeah, there we go. There's something that actually has stuff in it. So all it does is actually replaces this. So say we open up this... There's a fly in my room. Say we open up this dot doing RC. What it's going to do this time is just replace what's in this window over here as well. So that just works like you would expect, it just replaces the window. Most of the time I use that, but occasionally I do want splits. So let's just have a look at how those works because that's actually the next thing we've got in here. Now, by default, what Netru will try to do is it will split from its current window because it doesn't do any special handling for it. It will just treat this as an extra split within Vim. Now, I don't like that. The problem that you get there is that if you try to split this 20% window here, what it's gonna do is you're gonna have this tiny sliver for your Netru window and this tiny sliver for your other window. And I know that you can expand them. That's, that's too much hassle though. What I'm gonna do instead is just write an absolute hack to make it work the way that I want it to work. So here's how that works. So basically what I do, first off I'll open up a vertical split using the Netru method. It doesn't matter if it's a vertical split or a horizontal split because we're not gonna use it. So once that's opened, then I'll be focused on that file because once you open up something from Netru, you lose focus on Netru and you take focus to whatever you've opened. Now, what I do there is actually get the path of the new opened file and I'll save that in a variable. Then I quit out of that new window because what it's gonna do is it's gonna try to split the Netru window when I don't want that. Once I then close that new split, it then puts me back on focus on my main window, right? Then we'll open up a split using the normal Vim method and jump over to that one. And you know what? That works perfectly. So that's what I've been doing pretty much since I started using this because it just, it's so much nicer than the way that Netro handles it by default. I know you can play around with the Netru settings, but I'm, I really like this hack way more. So say I want to open up, say this bash history in a split. I can just press capital V on this and bam, we have a split. Or if I wanted a horizontal split, I can do the same thing. I can press H, capital H, and that opens up a horizontal split. The horizontal split, the way that works normally in Netru is it will put a horizontal split in this window here. So you've got this really small one. And as I was saying before, I know you can resize windows. That's a hassle. I just want to do it like this where it's going to work perfectly. I don't want to really think about it. So that's why I do it like this and not really any other method. So next up, I just have a function for my Netru mappings that I've changed. So I've obviously got those new ones that I've added. So I've got one for toggling Netru. I haven't actually mentioned this one yet, but basically what this is going to do is it's going to run this function down here. So by default, you can't actually toggle Netru. What it's going to do every time you try to run the Netru function or the, the Netru command, whatever it's called, is it's going to open up a new window of Netru. This function right here is basically going to check if Netru is open, and if it's open, it's going to close it. If it's closed, it's going to open it. I didn't write this function myself. I have no idea what half this stuff does, but I found it on Stack Overflow, and Stack Overflow was a great website. So that's why I use this. So I would recommend using this if you want to have toggleable Netru, if you could write it yourself, but this is just much easier because Yes, you can, as I've said, it is just a normal Vim split, so you can quit out of it normally. That's a hassle though, and you don't want to do that. So yeah, we've got Control F to open and close that basically. Occasionally, I've noticed that it will break on some things. I'm not really sure what's causing it to break. I need to look into that as well, but it will actually open and close it, so it still works. I, I don't actually know what's doing that, so I'll, I'll definitely look into that. The other ones we have in here are for opening a split to the right and opening a split below. And this last one in here is a little bit of a hack to fix a problem that Netru has. So I don't know if it's just my bindings or what's going on. So if I just show you what it looks like without that fix on there. 
just open up a new Vim buffer. And let's say we want to open up, I don't know, just anything in here like this, dot doing RC. So if I open that up, then, so we come back over here. If we then press control L, it's going to bring up the net true buffer instead of letting me jump back to the file like it's supposed to. I don't really like that it does that. I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be doing either. I thought it would be about like diving into a folder, but if we press control L on say the dot cache folder, for example, it doesn't dive into it. It just goes over to another net true buffer. So I don't really know what the purpose of this binding is. It might just be playing weirdly or it might just be bound weirdly within net true. However, I don't actually care because I just get rid of the binding. So I just basically remap it to control W and then L. So if you don't know, that's just the way you jump to a split to the right with the default Vim bindings basically. Now this next one in here is just to actually make sure that those net true mappings are run on every single file type, nothing too special there. We went over toggle net true already, so I'm not gonna go back into that one. And then this next one in here, this is another one that I didn't come up with myself. Basically what this will do is, I'll just show you actually, it's way easier to show you. So if we open up a Vim buffer and we close our main window and there's no other windows left besides the net true window, basically all it's gonna do is just quit out of Vim. I had it configured like this within nerd tree as well. When I quit out of a file, that's when I want to quit out of a file. I don't want to keep seeing my file tree. I know some people use net true a bit differently than I do, but for me, I am just using it as a file explorer while I'm coding. And I use Vim for other stuff besides coding as well. Sometimes I'll just have one file open. And because I'm just opening up that net true window as soon as I launch Vim, I don't want it to be there for things where I'm only just working on one file basically. And on that note, to make NetTrue actually open up, as soon as I open up my Vim buffer, all I'm doing is this auto command right here. So auto command Vim enter on any file type, I'm calling toggle NetTrue. So all that's gonna do is, regardless of the type of file I open up, I should probably make that so it's just the sort of files where I program on, because those are the only files where I ever actually care about my file tree. So if I'm doing, say, like a a markdown file. I typically don't care about having NetTrue there, so I might make it so it's just the code files I work on and like the LaTeX stuff and things like that. But for now, it's just gonna open up on everything. And then the last thing we have in here is just to make sure that NetTrue is open variables actually defined, because if you remove this line, it's not gonna work properly. It'll still actually open up Vim, but it's not gonna let you actually use that variable properly, basically. Now, NetTrue isn't perfect. So the problem with NetTrue is, it's not really a problem with NetTrue, it's the fact that NerdTree exists. So because NerdTree is vastly more popular, you have a lot more plugins actually built around the NerdTree idea. So you've got things like your Git built into it, and I don't know if you can get dev icons working on NetTrue, you might be able to get them in, but there's also dev icons for NerdTree and a bunch of other cool stuff that you could use along with it. Now, there are some plugins for NetTrue, like you have Vinegar. I'm not running Vinegar on my system because I don't really see much of a benefit to it, but there are a few. Most of the plugins for a Vim File Explorer, though, are built with NetTrue in mind. So you've got to keep that in mind if you do want to run NetTrue. If you're like me, though, and you just want to use it as like a basic file explorer, I don't actually see any reason not to use NetTrue. I actually feel really dumb for using NerdTree all of this time. I should have just used NetTrue and not bothered having to install a bunch of other extensions. So for the time being, I'm sticking with NetTrue. I really like it so far. And now that I've got it working the way that I like it, minus the sim links not working properly, I'm gonna keep using it and I'm gonna keep enjoying it basically. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links, so my Discord and my Telegram. So feel free to check any of those out if you want to chat with me or see video updates. I've also got my support links down below, so that's my Patreon and all those other methods. So if you want to support the channel, feel free to use any of those. But as always, if you don't want to, then you don't have to. And lastly, I've got my ultimate video platform, so my library and my BitTube. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check those out. Library is doing really, really well lately, so 
I reckon it's probably going to overtake my YouTube again. We'll see how that goes, though. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.